so guys welcome this is our first session in the series of our uh, valentines week for the coders so this is a very informal session it's not uh, is not something that which is like your lectures or something like that it's a very informal session it's just we will share our experience and what our views in uh, what our views are there in this domain uh, they can be wrong but it's just our perspective so if if you feel like i'm saying something wrong you can just write in the chat because we all are learning here so if i'm wrong then if you correct me then it's good like, i also learn something and others also learn something so don't be uh, the point is don't feel shy this is a very informal session so let's start then so before starting uh, i just want to mention that this uh, the opoc community it's a it's an unofficial community it's not anywhere related to iit goa uh, this community is uh, maintained by uh, these uh, this these people they are there and there are four more uh, they will join later so it's uh, we have aniket myself srajan adarsh suyesh anish somesh and atharva and uh, a huge round of applause for these guys like we did uh, we really uh, have a very hectic schedule like it's a very hectic schedule and we somehow managed to uh, conduct this huge session it's like it's a very it's a very time consuming thing but we did it uh, just just for the sake of the community so we are trying to build a coding community it's not uh, it's not related to like uh, only for iit goa it is like a community in which uh, all over india in the globe anyone can come and it's a community guys so just remember this thing it's a community so uh, in community it is not a competition it's a community so people help each other we share our experience you will share your experience and and, and this is how community grows so just make sure to be interactive the one rule of thumb is that be interactive uh, share your knowledge with us we will share our knowledge if you have any doubt or error anything that came uh, feel free to ask us Uh, just I, I just want to mention uh, that uh, all these sessions and uh, all our previous sessions that we are conducted, they 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 all are in our YouTube channel as well as uh, if you have not joined the our WhatsApp group, please join it. It's a very active group, and mm, all all the doubts that the people are most of them are solved then and there. So now let's start. So before starting, just a question for you guys in the chat. Answer it. according to you what is machine intelligent like how will you say that a machine is intelligent what characteristics they should have like write in the chat like aniket atharva can you tell me the like i can't see the window the chat window so you have yeah, to tell uh, me the ashanan says to learn from its past actions uh, that then, is very unique like we all learn from our past experience but it's not a nature of intelligent like we also sometimes do mistake and we don't learn this so it's it's a characteristic of machine but it's not a characteristic of human yeah then next a uh, very unique guy ganja and code he has written <laughs> adaptation property okay then umar sayed's uh, sorry umar sayed says uh, when a machine takes decision by itself given certain situations like then it it is like coding na we we are giving instructions and depending on that it is taking the action it's not something we can say intelligent intelligent is something like we say humans are intelligent so in that perspective how can you say that uh, if you want to say like uh, a machine is intelligent so how will you say that then uh, there are a lot of answers i will read it one by one learning and okay. memory quick result based on its efficiency problem solving ability controls system automation ability how it can access the situation and find the fastest and efficient solution to it then <laughs> other says machines are dumb okay <laughs> logical inference efficiency of work that it knows its approx 100% ability to solve in many ways by self ability to solve problems on its own learn from its surroundings most of them are uh, pointing towards that ability to ability of the machine to solve the problem by itself 
yeah so so i guess these are the answers so let me tell you some things that you didn't mention like we are human so we have emotions no one nobody like says that a machine if a machine has emotion then it ha- it is intelligent see emotion is something which is like the major obstacle right now in ai i will tell you later this this is the something which is very majorly uh, restricting us from being a machine to intelligent and like a uh, learning part is good like we also learn the thing is uh, that uh, what you said like uh, someone answered that a quick decision quick decision making see it's not the characteristics of all humans that like, uh, uh, some things which are abstract like uh, will power okay that is a thing which uh, can be considered as uh, intelligent like uh, we can take decisions on the base of the situation somebody said that so it's a good thing so these so you can understand what i'm saying like uh, if a machine behaves like human like somebody says machines are dumb like humans are also in some uh, some ways dumb uh, and not always in some ways humans are also dumb and not only humans every uh, animal is in some ways dumb so if the machine shows like uh, some that silly characteristic then also we can consider it like intelligent so these are also some qualities so so before uh, let me introduce myself my name is ranjit chaurasia i am in uh, iit goa csc branch second year i mainly work in uh, deep learning and ai ml uh, i will tell you about deep learning and i try to apply these things in iot and robotics so the thing is here i want to just i why i mention mention that i want uh, i am trying to apply these things in iot and robotics so the thing is even if you are you belong to different domains like in web dev or anywhere that the important thing is ai ml is something which is like going in every domain it is a part of every domain even if you make a website in the back end you have to run an uh, ml model or a ai model or a part detection something like that so you have uh, even though you don't like it i can fully understand so you should know the basics behind what is going on so that you can implement it in your front end so that's why uh, if even if you don't like this domain just get a insight of how this domains works how these things work so that uh, even if you are making something like a front end or a app uh, you can uh, easily say like ha back end mein ye ho raha hai to we can use this theek hai so now let's move on so the the first question which came into mind is like whenever we heard ai it's a very fancy word like artificial intelligence it's the word was coined around 1940 or 1920 something like the uh, the thing which ai is like artificial intelligence is like how can we give intelligence to a machine so this thought was started was uh, see the basic general idea that i will not go into deep history is the, the history of ai is a very rich history like it started uh, it started in around um who was the mentor of galileo is it started at the time of galileo like the first uh, a, a kind of a definition which related to ai started in galileo's times so galileo is a very long time it's like uh, when we don't even think of machines is that time which started so ai is uh, so the 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 field is very old but the growth of the field was uh, was after 1950 and the growth of ml and ai was around after 1980 or 1990 after the uh, growth in this technology so so what ai is like how ai we come across this field like these are the questions which people think and this led to the birth of the f- domain ai so like can uh, machines or systems can think like humans can they think can they take rational decision that that a person mentioned that you take a, uh, take a quick decision based on the situation that is a rational decision and thinking something rationally and acting upon it is two things like see the rational decision like uh, you have seen some sci-fi movies like uh, p- uh, machines take over the world they try to kill humans uh, i say they are not like rational decisions but then humans also uh, there are many dictators who who did the same thing so they can be considered as rational decisions so there might be a possibility that you uh, the systems can take over the world like it's like very wrong oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun fact it's like and it's not a fact it's it's just a fun imagination we can imagine anything so this is how the domain is like 
artificial intelligence is a domain then it has a subset uh, the subset is machine learning and the machine learning has a small subset which is deep learning so deep learning uh, the growth of deep learning started after 2005 but the thing was deep uh, the thought like again same thing the thought of how we can do deep learning started around 1940 1950 so but that time we don't have that advanced technology so this is around what exactly ai is how it is work and see the part which is not included like machine learning is a subset but it is not completely overlapping with the ai set it is because in ai there are different things also like uh, path finding if you heard of uh, algorithms like a star a double star uh, dijon algorithm these are part of ai so is just uh, just to uh, make sure you if you can come up with these word then you know what it is so what exactly we do in machine learning and deep learning so we will talk about machine learning so we will make models so uh, let me ask you a question what according to you is a model N not the bollywood model please right in the chat aniket elegant aniket yes yeah, someone has written 3d models of organic molecules okay okay that is also a model okay uh, a simplified view of something real and complex okay this is a good definition models are representations of something Okay, sample right. of how the system works imagination of a real situation mm, maybe so okay so i i think that def definition that uh, was like representation so exactly what model is in ml like model is like a person you train it on something so you give give him a data set like uh, you like we give you a book we said learn the book and then we will have a test so it's like this you learn it then you uh, you have a uh, practice questions like in any chapter you have practice questions so what you do is you solve you start solving the practice questions and then you check the answers and if you find like this question was incorrect or this question was incorrect so what goes wrong then you again go back to the chapter you again see ki what exactly goes wrong you learn it again that part is optimization and then you give the test again this is how the train and optimization part of the model works so model is something that represent a certain thing from the environment like uh, the biological molecule that you are saying it represent a biological molecule that we have in into a system so these models are like this but uh, these model give us some answer or anything in return they don't represent anything they just return something and then we have a test the test is like your mid sem or end sem these are like test which uh, tell us how efficient the model is so this this is the model and this is the basic unit i will say of ml and dl so this is a fun question like these are three pictures each picture depict one word uh, add them to form a word this is a hint Get that they guess. Uh, not yet. Just a hint. Uh, uh, other about it in the yesterday's session. It's just a hint. Just combine these three photos. One photo stands for one term. We'll wait for another fifteen seconds. I guess. So did someone? No. No. Okay. So the answer is natural language processing. So this is nature. So natural language, a different language, and this is a processing unit. So it's processor. 
so nlp is something which is used like nlp is like whenever you say something you use any language so how the model understand this language this that a particular subset of domain uh, belongs to nlp this is your cd amazon alexa works google assistant these these are the part of like ml ai so first machine learning so guys machine learning consists of three things it's like supervised learning unsupervised learning and re reinforcement learning reinforcement learning i will just tell you right away it's, uh, it's just uh, my first my view of uh, seeing something if you uh, if you do something like assume you are uh, do something good like you did a community work or something which is good so you receive a trophy this is just a simple example so you receive a trophy so this motivated you to do something good in the future so that you will receive a trophy again so this is how reinforcement learning works whenever a model do something good he will receive something like appreciation and whenever it do something wrong the opposite will happen so we are just enforcing the model to do a particular thing that according to us is good so reinforcement learning is using in self driving cars so we reinforce them ki if you avoid any accident or if you um uh, break yourself uh, no sir not break no not break yes so if you stop at the red light then these are something you then it will be appreciated Then now talking about the uh, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So, supervi in supervised learning, assume you have uh, see I that you have a book. There have some questions, and questions you have answers as well. So consider this as a supervised learning. Like you can check the answer once you optimize yourself. Like once you read the whole chapter, then you have practice questions in the back page. Then you also have answers at the last page. so these types of uh, these in which the uh, features target so features are like questions and targets are like those questions so if you have those things then it is considered supervised learning you it means you have supervised on two kind of supervised learning like classification and regression these are i'm just telling you in a high level uh, is just for the sake of you to understand it so in classification assume is like you have uh, these two you have these two color uh, strips so what classification is like you identify it is of orange color and this is of green color so you identify it na so you classify it ki anything which belongs to this color will be of green and anything which belongs to this color will be of orange so this is how classification work so in uh, in the uh, left corner you see classification in this graph you are seeing red uh, red dots and uh, blue dots so these dots uh, are the data so assume here it is written, uh, written that these red dots are disease and these uh, are healthy cells assume these are cells so what exactly is we have given you uh, some features like some questions and for a particular question the answer is dis either disease or health healthy like assume is like a multiple choice question something like that okay so this is how it works so what the model do is it will uh, try to separate them with a line this is a line but it will try to separate it according to the functions it's like it can be a cubic uh, it can be a cubic curve or uh, x to the power 4 curve or x to the power 10 curve it uh, it can be any polynomial it will try to fit it will try to separate that and uh, you have learned like um, when the point belongs to a line inside or outside like when we put the point into the equation if it is positive then it belongs in positive axis and in uh, negative it belongs to negative axis this is how the classification works but it is see here there are two classification like understand like if a picture belongs to a cat or a not this is two but there are many like we have we can make a classification which can classify four things or more than that so it's it is kind of like probability but uh, there are different tools for that in the case of regression see classification you have um, fixed answers like multiple choice questions in regression it's like one word answer assume it like that one uh, integer type answer no no uh, not integer this is a real a real number answer like in je you have real number answers you know of uh, which belongs to two decimal precision it's like it's just like real numbers that your answer can be from minus infinity to plus infinity or can be from 0 to infinity depending on how you are training the model so it's like a continuous model so the what model will try this time is it will not separate 
those two points it will try to map those points like uh, here it is just uh, mapping it a line is mapping so that it will accurately map these things uh, here the equation is a line but the equation can be a higher dimension equation like a polynomial of higher degrees like in three dimensions it can exist beyond three dimension four dimension five dimensions and now unsupervised learning so here i will uh, see the demonstration so we have the algorithm and then what machine will do is it will separate those so what exactly it is doing is we have a data like the first window that we are having a the raw data that is written we have the data but the data the thing is that da that data is we don't have any answer to that these questions like as you might give you a book which has a chapter and then it has uh, some questions you can answer these questions but you don't have um, what exactly the answers are we don't give you the answers so what you will try to do is you will try to separate these things like this question belongs to biology this question belongs to chemistry like this so assume like can you see the screen see can you see it so tell me how will you separate these things group them if you can see right in the chat window try to group them in any possible way you want to and it says color okay color on the basis nice. of color yes uh, then uh, company logo cap okay. color cap yes then type of ink ball pen awesome. gel pen company nice 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 so right, you smooth or rough okay okay that This was yeah so uh, so you know like you can see why uh, getting see assume these these are like data and you can segregate it so what machine will do it will also do the same thing that it will try to figure out uh, it will try to figure out something and group them so the most basic thing to group them is like color like the color detection is very easy for the machine like i am saying it easy but this is very tough but the thing is it's something which uh, in the lower end is easy so this machine also do tries to do these things like in in this uh, gfi you can see the is this se uh, separating it in the form of colors uh, those unsupervised learning algorithms are much tougher than the supervised learning algorithm uh, but the point is in machine learning it is possible to make sense of any data whose even you don't know the answer so this is very helpful like what machine thinks about it and now deep learning so guys before starting it's like how deep learning emerged just a, a small history like what people believe back uh, like what the theories are that like whenever we see something whenever we are, like you are seeing right now the presentation so whenever you see the presentation what happens is all the data that you are uh, all the things that you are learning right now it is not stored in a particular area in your brain all the data is scattered all over your brain i mean in all over your neurons and whenever you learn something new two neurons which are not connected earlier connect to make this possible this is a uh, uh, the thing is it's more complicated in that way i am just uh, telling you so that you can understand it's just a high view high level view so here you can see a brain and a neuron connection so this is how deep learning emerged like how can we make machine work like how our brain works this is the main agenda of deep learning neurons you, you heard about neurons so i will tell you more about neurons and how neural network works so in deep learning basically uh, in machine learning we have three fields right reinforcement learning deep uh, and supervised learning and supervised learning in deep learning also these three fields exist but the thing is deep learning is new so the reinforcement learning and unsupervised learning are something which are the topic of research and we don't have a much as uh, i don't know till now i think there is no much progress in it but in supervised learning it's like awesome like these last 5 years what deep learning did like completely revolutionized everything like all the your advertisements recommendation systems they are all renewed all the machine learning models are replaced by deep learning models and they are damn efficient like very efficient so it's a it's a very fast growing field and it has like very uh, and the research is uh, and if you want to go to in research work in deep learning 
like they have immense topics to work on and i will say there is a huge amount of work already done but that work is very little compared to what we are thinking about deep learning right now so these are some kind uh, some neurons structures simple neural network deep neural network cnn is convolutional neural network rnn is a uh, rectilinear i guess neural network uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, i don't remember the name so let's see so what deep see a deep neural network all the dots you are seeing right now these dots these are known as neurons so difference i told you first two the simple neural network and the deep neural network simple neural network doesn't have these hidden layers so we have a input layer in one layer we have vertical columns like these columns consider them these as uh, the layers so we have the input layer we have the output layer but we don't have any uh, in between hidden layers like we at most we can have one hidden layer then it will be considered as a simple neural network because your network is very simple but when you start adding more hidden layers more neurons in it then it will it becomes like very deep so it is known as deep neural network so this is how a deep neural network works it's just like mapping or can we uh is 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 not like the graph mapping or like that each each thread these arrows from one neuron to second neuron let me show you so see from this neuron to this neuron this this is the arrow this is this arrow contained a weight so assume i assume in this input i have 1 and the weight is 2 so the uh, result will be 1 into 2 so in this neuron the input will uh, the value which will be saved will be 2 so similarly each neuron is connected to all the neurons on this layer this type of uh, when each neuron is connected to all the neurons of the uh, next layer is known as a dense layer uh, these are some fundamentals you, if you start working on it these are very normal i will not go much about it like then it will be a brainstorming kind of thing <laughs> so this is how it works like this is the basic uh, the basic structure of a deep neural network now a convolutional neural network it's a very uh, interesting thing like this field is emerging very quickly so you have heard like uh, there are face recognition systems or digit recognition system this is a example of digit recognition system so there are different things we can recognize anything a cat a dog a human a car a truck anything so this is how a convolutional neural network works see the first is the input layer and the last is the output layer and uh, okay a question for you the output layer has value 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 so which kind of uh, uh, which kind of supervised learning uh, segregation it is like is it a classification or it is a regression which kind of model it is quick like 10 seconds yeah most of them are uh, saying cl classification nice so i think you understand what i'm saying so great guys great very good it's like this is a classification model because we have delimited things we we given them nine 10 options so in the first layer what is happening is it is detecting edge so convolutional neural network what it do is it detects the edges uh the, there is a theory about it like how cnn emerges like uh, we put a cat in front of a tv and we show different angles of a picture like in different uh, areas like this if this is the screen we show first this uh, uh image in here and then here and then here you can see this here then here and then here so what exactly that cat did is different part of the brains activated when the image is at the different positions of the screen this is how the convolutional neural network the idea key idea behind it emerged so in the first layer uh, detects some edges the second layer detects some other edges the third layer detects some other edges see this is how it works and uh, see a image is either a gray scale or a rgb so it is of the form of a matrix a 2d or 3d matrix so what we have to do is we have to convert this 2d from till till the detection we need image after we detected all the things what we want is in the form of a straight array i think you will 
Ah, when you start working on, I will show you in the project how what I mean about it. Like uh, it's, it's if I don't touch it upon it, then it will be good for you. It's a very vast topic. So uh, yeah, like, Sajan, Sajan, sorry to interrupt you. Before uh, we uh, proceed further, I have a poll uh, question. So I will okay. just publish it. Okay. So I guess everyone can see it. So which ML algorithm makes prediction when you have a set of input data and do no possible responses? Options mm -hmm. are supervised learning, sup unsupervised learning, supervisory logic, deep learning. Okay, 15 seconds more. Sergeant, you can uh, shift to the uh, this AME tab because okay. the, only the poll is visible right now. Okay, fine, fine. I will just close the poll now and uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So then so you can give your good response. <laughs> I switch back to the presentation. I will watch it after that. Like okay. so. Uh, I will give you the stats. Like 60% of them say supervised learning, then 20% okay. say deep learning, and 10% okay. each say super supervisory logic and unsupervised learning. Okay. So I will tell you at the end. So uh, uh, let's start from here. Then I will tell about what the answer of the poll is. So first, uh, let's start. Like after all, you have learned this these things, like these topics. So from where to start? So the major language which is used in AI is Python, and the reason why Python is used, the reason why Python is used is because of these these libraries like these libraries are built over the python and like they uh, almost all i think all yes all are open source libraries like they are very efficient like tensorflow because of tensorflow deep learning can finally take place in the growth in ml there is a after tensorflow now there is a new library which built in over the tensorflow library and which is no Keras and Keras is like very awesome library. All the major work in deep learning are done using Keras. Like uh, the first, the first icon is a SymPy, SymPy library. Uh, the SymPy library is a high mathematical library. It's a higher version of uh, NumPy. It's, it's totally for the um, mathematical purposes. It is used in machine learning and deep learning for uh, other calculations, but it is something like even I didn't start using it. It is used when you advance in higher levels. TensorFlow, it's like it's a very, I will not say basic, uh, essential, but the thing is, if you are using TensorFlow, it makes your work much easier. It's, it's very efficient. Pandas library is for data visualization. Like the second session we have is uh, data science. So you have this much of data. Assume you have uh, a very large amount of data. Before making a model or before training a model, you have to filter the data that is known as pre-processing and for filtering, you should know how the data looks. See, the data is a very huge thing. Like you have hundred features. And then if you are making a classification of hundred models, like classification with hundred labels, see, so you can see right now how big a table can be. And each, uh, if a minimum model training data set will contain at least 80,000 rows, like 80,000 rows you will have. So you can't visualize 80,000 rows and can't uh, separately uh, filter each row. 
if there is a value missing or something for that we used uh, the pandas library there is one more which is or uh, which is more advanced you will uh, it's it's no uh, you will see it in the next session in the data science session it's very important to visualize the data you have then this is skitlan skitlan is majorly for ml uh, but uh, it is like it makes your life much more easier for ml like they have built in models uh, like passive aggressive classifier and different things and all the functions like splitting the data you want to split the data to test as well as to train for that skitlan is very useful for cnn models for any image related thing open cv if you attended the safias like my event then we also talked about it the hectic games in the hectic games uh, open cv about open cv it's a very powerful and because of this image processing and things related to image are possible this is matplotlib for showing the data numpy numpy i told you it's array uh, python doesn't have a built in array it has a list and to make a array list you have to use numpy and this is pytorch this uh, this is created by the facebook uh, the facebook association but this majorly works on um, open cv like it works on images and it's a very good thing for images like all the uh, i will show you some projects on uh, which is are possible because of pytorch so now that we have done about python how can we train ourselves like in cp you can practice things you can get uh, you can get the questions they are answered in uh, different platforms like hack the games uh, sorry uh, you have hacker rank you have core chef you have different things we also also have a session for cp uh, they will they will tell you more detail so for this ai ml part we have kagel i will show you how how you can access the kagel itself uh, so now these are some of my projects i did in the past face mark face face mask detector is a simplified version of what the current airports and uh, railways railways of our country are using or uh, different countries are using they detect multiple people at the same time what i build detects one person at the same time uh, news classifier this use nlp this news classifier it uses nlp to classify whether the news is genuine or a fake news and you can do that and you can do much more things with from it object recognition system like which kind of object it is object localization where exactly the object is in the whole image style transfer this is a good thing this style transfer model is a very fun model and this model is possible because of pytorch i will show you and multiple task models are like uh, using one model we can do multiple tasks from it uh, you can find uh, you can find all my projects in my github i will show you that also like github is something which is very important if you want to showcase your uh, projects and if you want to work in open source it's very important and we have a session for github also so that you can understand and github i think github is something uh, is very uh, it's like a instagram of the coding community it's, it's it have more features than instagram so facebook also facebook so it's, it's very important coding community right now so this is an example i will show in the github also so this is how i detected my face whether i'm wearing a mask or not so the accuracy is pretty good in it it's like 99.1% the accuracy was so uh, the thing is i used anaconda navigator if you if you don't have uh, the specs to use anaconda navigator the jupyter notebook you can also use a uh, google collab it's a very good like api you can use in browser and you can even use gpus on it like if you want to train a model which will take a huge amount of time then use uh, gpu run it in the gpu it will it will give you the uh, result in like i think 100 times or 10 times faster than running the same model training the same model in the cpu so it's like very good so now let me show you some interesting things uh, first i will walk you through kagel let's wait so in the kagel uh, see this is a kind of window you will get uh, in the competitions you will have different kind of competitions uh, like see the this tensor flow competition is going on right now but the thing with this tensor flow uh, i will show you the thing is the data that it provided you is 
around is around 15 GB. <laughs> so I can't see. You can hear see 15.23 GB. So only big firms can have this data because even if I downloaded this data, training the model on this huge amount of data, it is not possible through a laptop. Even not possible through a computer, I guess. Like if you have a very good computer, then it is possible. So, uh, so these are competitions. Like there are a comp this is an ongoing competition. Like after twelve days, it will be end. Like eleven days. There are some uh, contests which are ongoing. Like go for like one two years. Like this Titanic machine learning. This is Titanic disaster model. This is a very good model if you want to. Uh, this is a very good competition if you want to uh, try yourself. If you want to start from I I myself started from this Titanic model itself. Uh, it's it's uh, you can uh, see that when you will go into Titanic model now you will see their data. Uh, let me see their data has uh, what I'm saying about pre-processing now. See this kind of thing. You can do this kind of things in data visualization like using pandas library and other libraries. So you will learn these things in the next session that is tomorrow. So uh, see uh, you can see here. I will show you if, if there is like missing. Yes, yeah, see. So there are mismatch values. There are missing values. So you have to uh, convert the missing values. Either you have to remove that whole column, or you have to fill some value in it. Because if you are passing zero to a model, then the model don't understand anything. See that data should also make sense. And these missing values are not zeros. I guess what they put here are null values. So they are null, and null value doesn't make sense for the model to train. So. Uh, these are some things pre-processing that are required. Uh, once you start working on it, you will get a hang of it. But this competition is very good if you want to start uh, all the um, basics. See, huh, and one more thing. Uh, these all libraries, don't start working on these libraries. Uh, don't start just going on YouTube and uh, learning like TensorFlow, learn TensorFlow or learn uh, Psych, uh, PyTorch or anything. These libraries are very huge libraries. Uh, we we do, even we don't know how to use the full TensorFlow library. What what we will what you should do is uh, learn in the process. Take a small model, work on it, see uh, what are the required. Just learn those things only. So uh, I will show you. I will show you how this, uh, you can uh, flow my project and start working on it. So you will understand. And if you want data set, like if you want to make your own things own models for it. You can get the data set from here, like uh, all the songs from Taylor Swift library oh, album. And there are some fun libraries also like uh, a library which contains all the anime recommendation and other like suicide, traffic passenger. There are huge amount of data set. Like Kagel has a very active community, a very active community. So before going to like, uh, before going to, I will give you this the chat visit this website is good for deep learning if you want to understand how neural network works see this is how neural network works you can see you can test here you can run it epoch learning rate these are some things that will come after you start learning but you this is something which is fun and you can understand many things from here see this is uh, this is a open source website by uh, I think TensorFlow, I think by TensorFlow, it's a very good library. You should, uh, it's a very good website. So, so please visit us after the meet. Uh, so this is my GitHub. So uh, I will uh, see, I will go here. I will show you some of my projects. News classifier, uh, happy games, I will tell you, the thing, yes, see this PyTorch neural style transfer, this deep learning PyTorch neural transfer, like this is the style transfer model. So the, um, let me show you. So the model, so see, you, you can see two, uh, two images. The first one is the uh, content image and the second one is the style image. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this style image and I'm somehow fitting this style image into my main image, my content image. So you, you can see I fitted this background in it, like giving it a style kind of thing. It's and it's very fun. Like uh, if you are passionate about it, like it's very fun to experiment. This is just an experiment. 
like see uh, i you know, fit try to fit this uh, there are different intensities like how much intensity do you want you can do it also so if you want to see this library you can see it like there are more mm. i will show you one more there like face mask detector i'm sorry there are video object detection with see object localization what i mean by object localization i guess i don't have okay it will take time okay see so see this. we want to detect this emoji so it's a huge image you can see this is a huge image in it, in which we have to detect the position of the emoji so this is how the object uh, this object localization works and it's a multitask it's a multitask also like so the so see these are uh, this is the model architecture just just for see first we have the convolutional layers because we want to see how we want to uh, check the image once this is done then we go to the dense layer dense layer works with the uh, numericals only it don't work with the images i guess you can go to my github all the things are man, uh, there are some good projects and even not in github you can uh, you can even go to the opoc and you can go to any github of any member of opoc they have some awesome projects on different domains they will show you so you can go there so i think this is it for the today's session so thanks everyone for joining the session and uh, i hope you guys be a part of the session tomorrow as well and not only tomorrow but for all the sessions which are coming so everyone thank you have a good day